Hey everyone, it's Ivan, KeepAdger.com, here to bring you part three in our firearms ownership series. And today, we're gonna to be talking about the nomenclature as well as the cycle of operation for a rifle. Words mean things, and we wanna make sure that we are speaking the same language. As a new shooter, a lot of the terminology is probably new, it's kind of foreign, and as the series progresses, we wanna make sure that when I say, hey, go ahead, drop the magazine, pull the charging handle to the rear, we're all on the same page at that point. As far as rifles, I decided to go with this one. There are a lot of different rifles out there. This is a very common one. And while some may look different than this, a lot of them are functionally the same. Basically a AR-15 variant. So we're gonna go with this. While these two are largely different aesthetically, they operate almost exactly the same and have massive parts compatibility. Starting at the back and moving forward, this right here is the stock. This being a pistol brace, nuanced differences, basically per the ATF with respect to this being technically a pistol and this being a rifle. The stock as well as the pistol brace telescope in and out on this piece, which is the buffer tube. And then forward of that, we have our lower receiver. Lower receiver is this entire portion there and this portion there. From on the lower receiver, we have our pistol grip we then have our triggers, trigger guard. Forward of that, we have a magazine release located in the same spot. And then this right here is going to be your magazine well, where this magazine is inserted. This being a magazine, this being a magazine. This right here happens to be ambidextrous safety, whereas this one does not have the ambidextrous safety. This upper receiver, this portion here up top, as well as this portion here, Largely the same. This one does have a forward assist. We'll go into that later. And this right here, as well as this right here, is our charging handle. Right here, this being our ejection port, and this being ejection port cover. That door is closed, as this one can easily be closed as well. Up on top here, this has a carrying handle with built-in rear sight, which is your iron sights, whereas right here, on top of this rail, we have this, which is a backup iron sight, which is folded down to make room for the scope, low power variable, one to six on the scope mount. This just having iron sights, whereas this actually has an optic as well as backup iron sights. Moving forward from our upper receiver, we have this handguard as well as this handguard here. And underneath it, both here as well as here, we have a barrel nut, which secures our barrel to the upper receiver. This right here is your delta ring if you have this style of handguard. And along this handguard, you can see these cutouts. It is M-lock. It is a method of attachment for attaching things to your handguard, such as this, which attaches directly to it, which is a hand stop. Up here, we have Picatinny rail, which allows the attachment of a backup iron sight right there. Whereas right here, we have a fixed front sight block. Down here, we have a sling point as well as bayonet lug and then we have our muzzle device. Muzzle devices come in different flavors. Some are flash hiders, some are muzzle brakes, some are compensators. This one right here has its muzzle device, but it's actually attached to a suppressor or silencer. And over the top of it, we have a silencer cover. Now taking a look at the left side of our rifle and pistol respectively, starting at the back forward, we have our stock, pistol brace, buffer tube, buffer tube, this right here happens to be a folding adapter, allows this entire piece to fold to the side. We have our pistol grip, we have our lower receiver, lower receiver, upper receiver, upper receiver. This side, the left side, we have our safety selectors. Right here, it is on safe. When we slide it 90 degrees, it goes on to fire. With this one, similar thing, except this doesn't go a full 90 degrees. That is fire. Right there is back to safe. As far as controls over on this side, we again have our charging handle, but now we have this piece right here, which is our bolt catch, bolt release. Kind of looks like a ping pong paddle. The upper and lower receiver can be separated completely by pulling out these two takedown pins. Inside of our lower receiver is our hammer, and inside of the upper receiver is this entire piece, which is the bolt carrier group. Right up here in the front, 
going into a recessed section of our bolt carrier is our actual bolt, that being the extractor. And then right here is your gas key. This right here is your charging handle. Usually over on the left side of the charging handle is a latch, which is required to depress that in order to manipulate your charging handle. With our magazine, right here we have our magazine body, the bottom of it being the floor plate, and the top we have what we call the follower. Behind the follower is a spring, and the reason it's called a follower is when we load rounds, these being plastic dummy rounds, we have kind of a rough shape of this, and these are double stacks. So one will go on this side, the next one ends up stacking on top like that, and they will go back and forth. Again, the follower following the rounds as we load them into it. When it comes to rounds of ammunition, we have these live rounds as well as these dummy inert rounds. These are made of numerous components. On the back here, in the middle right there, is the primer. The firing pin strikes that, ignites all the powder inside of this, which is a brass case. All that powder burns up, turns into gas, expands, pushes this, which is the bullet, the projectile, out the end of your barrel. Then this brass case is extracted and comes out the ejection port of your rifle. These right here, as I mentioned, are just inert. These are training rounds right here. The bullet is comprised of a core made of lead, and then it is covered in a copper jacket. Some bullets are made similar ways. You also have some with a steel penetrator in the middle, and then some are actually made of solid copper, the whole projectile. Moving into cycle of operations, right here, I have a couple dummy inert rounds loaded in the magazine. Magazine is inside of the magazine well, and that top round is sitting right below the bolt carrier group here. To start this, a round needs to get loaded. So the bolt carrier has to move back. It actually moves back inside of this buffer tube. And then as it moves forward, it strips the top round, slides up the feed ramps, which are right here in this back portion of the barrel. And it pushes that round into the chamber. Then taking the weapon off of safe onto fire, when the trigger is depressed, you have a hammer in here, come forward, hit a firing pin, which goes forward, ignites the primer. Primer then ignites all the powder inside that brass case. It expands, pushes the bullet down the barrel and out. As it moves fast and out that way, gas comes up into this gas block and through a tube, which is under this handguard, comes back, pushes into a gas key, which is in the top of your bolt carrier group, and it puts pressure on it, unlocks the bolt, allows and pushes the bolt back, at which point the round gets, or I'm sorry, the empty brass case gets ejected, and then the bolt comes back forward, strips another round, getting you ready to fire again. Mind you, this does not move back and forth when you fire it is non-reciprocating doesn't move i had to do it for the sake of demonstrating basically that cycle of operations that right there wraps up this episode hopefully giving you a foundational understanding as far as our nomenclature of our rifle as well as the cycle of operations be sure to join us as we continue that journey of firearms ownership and as always thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com Look forward to seeing you next time.